Okay, so this is a uh, recording for basically week one for uh, the discussion section. All right. So uh, hopefully you have your worksheet. The worksheet has five problems on it. All right. And typically we have basically we go through five problems in discussion section once a week. Right. Since this week discussion section will be online, um, I will basically go through it. All right. So let's go through each of the problems. Consider the following charge attached by rods below. Doesn't really matter. There's rods. Calculate the force F between charges. So there are two charges, right? Four microcoulombs and three microcoulombs, and they're separated by two meters. So let's draw a picture of that again. Right? So I have basically two charges. Problem one. Okay. Uh, this one is at four microcoulombs. And this one is at minus three microcoulombs, right? And I'm consider force basically between the charges, right? So I'm gonna basically consider the force on this one, number one first, and number two second. Okay. Now, the force is basically if you write from Coulomb's law, right? It's K Q1 Q2 over R squared R12 hat, right? That's basically the, the, the forces here. Let's basically draw an axis here. Let's draw this the x-axis in this case, right? And we're going to consider um, the forces basically between 1 and 2, right? So in this case, let me make sure I get this right. Uh, the force, let me just get this right, so let's see. Um, Right, okay, so this is going from um, going from position, sorry, this is force on two, force on one by two, right, force on one by two. Okay, so that would be basically drawing from this point on to here, okay? All right, so this is R12, and then if I wanted to do the other one, this is R21, right? So it's going from basically um, the force on one by two, and basically the question is basically going from two back to one, All right? Okay, so in this case, basically in situation one, F of one, two, okay? Now in the case, R12, well, let's see, this points in the minus, sorry, minus X hat direction, right? And then likewise, the force two on one, in this case, this vector, this new vector here, is going to be positive x hat direction, right? So this is positive x hat direction, this is minus x hat direction, all right? Okay, now this distance here is two meters, all right? So based on that, we can start basically writing everything down. Force on, on one by two is equal to k q1 q2 over r12 squared r12 hat right so let's fill that everything in this k is 9 times 10 to the 9 q1 is 4 microcoulombs so that's basically 4 times 10 to the minus 6 this one is minus 3 times 10 to the minus 6 okay Divided by R12, this is in meters, that's basically 2 squared, okay? Times R12, that's minus X hat, right? As we stated right there, okay? So let's put this all together now. This is 9 times 10 to the 9, 4 times 10 to the minus 6, minus 3 times 10 to the minus 6, right? Divided by 4. Right, minus x hat. All right, so let's go ahead and do the multiplication. That's basically four times nine times four times minus three. That's um, minus three times four times nine. Okay, and then the 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 it's basically times ten to the nine minus six minus six again. Right, divided by four. Right, okay. So let's make this thing simpler, right? We'll try to do as much as we can by hand, all right? Uh, nine minus six minus six, that's minus three, okay? The fours cancel, this is minus 27, okay? 
and this is a minus x hat direction. So let's spin it, finish this, it's minus 2 point, sorry, plus 2.7, the minus will kill each other, times 10 to the minus 2 in the x hat direction. And let's put in the unit force, this is going to be in newtons, right? And so basically it's 2.7 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons in the positive, etc. So this force here is attractive toward um, number 2, right? And you can show that F of 2 on 1 is going to be equal to minus 2.7 times 10 to the minus 2 uh, x hat newton. So basically it's the same force but difference in direction, right? And they are attracted towards each other. Okay, so that was uh, pretty simple, right? Okay, so now let's consider the next topic, all right? Okay. All right, so um, consider the following charge attached to the rods below. Calculate the force F1 and F2 between the charge, but the force is right. So this doesn't really make sense, all right? So I'm gonna ask you to compute is basically the force on one and the force on two, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do this, all right? All right, so let's draw that picture again, all right? Uh, number two here, okay? So we have basically first charge here is number one. This is at sitting at minus one microcoulomb, right? And then there's another charge here. This is charge three, say. This is at one microcoulombs. And then there's final one more left. Basically, this is at minus four microcoulomb. And this is number charge number two, okay? And I will compute the force on F1 and the force on F2, okay? These arrows here are just uh, represented because they don't actually mean anything yet. Uh, this distance here is one meter, and this distance here is two meters, all right? Okay, so let's basically compute the forces now, all right? We'll just basically look at force one first, all right? So F1, well, let's see, there are two forces here. It's the sum of the force by one on by three plus the force, right? So, of basically uh, one by two, okay? So this one and this one, right? So let's write this thing out. This is K, Q1, Q2, Q3, sorry, divide by R1, three squared, R1, three hat, plus K, Q1, Q2, R1, 2 squared, R1, 2 hat, right? So in this case, basically both these directions, basically chooses as the positive X direction. This is gonna be R1, 3 vector, and this is gonna be R1, uh, 2 vector, right? Going all the way to, to, to this point here, okay? So in that case, basically R13 hat is equal to R12 hat. They're all pointing the same direction. This is just minus X hat, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do this now, right? So the first thing is, basically, let's write down this one. This could basically be K. That's 9 times 10 to the 9. Q1 is minus 1 times 10 to the minus 6, right? It's microcoulombs. Q3 is basically 1 times 10 to the minus 6 microcoulombs. This distance here is 1 squared. And then this is all in the minus x hat direction, right? Now let's basically include the second term, okay? Plus 9 times 10 to the 9 again. Q1 is minus 1 times 10 to the minus 6. Q2 is minus 4 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, divided by, now this, this, this distance, so it's 1 plus 2, so it's actually 3 squared. Okay, and then the rest of it, this is still just minus x hat. Okay, all right, so we've constructed it. Let's go ahead and compute this thing out. All right, so what we do is as much by hand as possible. So this is 9 times this, so it's basically 9 times 1 times 1 times 10 to the 9 minus 6 minus 6 again. Right, divide by one squared minus x hat. 
Okay. Plus now, this is 9 times 1. Let's make this, this has a sign there, minus 1. 9 times minus 1 times minus 1, so basically positive, so times 4. Okay, times 10 to the 9, minus 6, minus 6 again. Divide by 3 squared is 9. Again, this is minus x hat, right? So let's go ahead and finish the rest off. So this is going to be minus 9 times 10 to the minus 3 minus x hat, right? Plus now, this 9 will kill each other. This is 4 times 10 to the minus 3 minus x hat, okay? So let's basically put these together. This is going to be a plus, plus. This is going to be a minus sign, right? So it's going to be 5 times 10 to the minus 3 in the x hat direction, Newton's, right? Okay, so let's look at this distinct field of force, basically in this direction, right? At 5 times 10 to the minus 3 Newton's, right? Positive, right? So this is going to be attractive toward these two other charges. All right. Okay, so that's basically um, problem two, right? Now, um, we could do the second part of this, but I'm going to think I'm going to let you guys do this on your own, right? Okay, beautiful. All right. So, let's get to the next problem, right? Let's consider the following. I'm going to need a little more paper here. All righty. So, let's consider this following problem here, okay? Consider an equal tri triangle, charges below. What is the electric in the middle of the triangle with the size or length L? Right. So, let's go figure that out. Okay, so, we have basically minus Q, so the positive Q there, positive Q, this is equilateral triangle. And each one of these uh, things is like length L, right? So we sort of know uh, what that has to be, right? And we want to find the middle of this triangle, right? So it'll be somewhere like this, okay? And we have to precisely determine what the middle of that triangle is going to look like, right? So in order to determine that, I have to basically draw some geometry. So this is, a, this is basically, if I draw a right angle from here, right? and I draw the straight down, right? This will basically bisect these things. So if this is an equilateral triangle, this entire angle here is 60 degrees. Then what that means is that this thing in here is gonna be 30 degrees, okay? Now, let me draw this thing down right here, okay? This is a right triangle here as well, right? And so this is a right triangle, right? Where this thing is gonna be 30 degrees, Right? This is 90 degrees because it's a right triangle. And so this thing out here is going to be 60 degrees. Right? Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. So, but we can determine the rest of it now. Okay? So this is going to be, this length of this side is going to be L over 2. Right? And so this length right here, right, is going to be L over 2 times the tangent of 30 degrees. Right? Because the tangent is basically uh, opposite over adjacent, right? This is 30 degrees, so this is the adjacent part is L over 2, so the L over 2 times tan tangent of 30. Okay, so that determines this distance here, right? So if I want to determine this rest of the distance from here to here, okay, um, let me try to see how, how I can do this, right? So um, I want to determine this distance here, right? So let's go figure that out. So this distance here is L, the entire distance here is L times tangent. So this entire thing is 60 degrees. This is the right triangle again. Tangent 60 is equal to, let's say this distance here. So this distance is this entire distance here. Um, uh, I'll call this thing, um, I'll do this. Let me determine this distance h here, all right? So this is this distance here, basically going around this side. So I just need to subtract out minus L over 2 tangent 30 
this is u h. So this is h, this distance here, right? And now, by symmetry, this is also h as well, and this is also h as well, right? So that's very nice. So we have basically everything we need, all right? And so, at the end of the day, if we want to look at this thing, I have three triangles, okay? Where I know the where I know the hypotenuse. This is h, h, and h. All right. Okay. And this is thirty degrees. This is thirty degrees, and that's just straight down, right? Okay. So if I want to determine electric field, electric field is the sum of all the electric fields to the point by charges from the i from the i charge to the to the um, Points that we care about, okay? And so this can be basically be K QI divided by RIP squared, RIP hat, sum over this, okay? All right. Okay, so now I've basically constructed this thing. I can go ahead and determine this thing. Um, let's just be slightly careful, all right? We need to determine this thing first. So I need to determine the numerical values of the tangent of these things, and do I have my calculator with me? I do not, right? But uh, one thing I can try, I can try using my phone, okay? You're not gonna allow it to do this on the exam, but I can do it right now here. Okay, so let me see if I've got my calculator out. Let's hope this calculator will work. Um, So this is in degrees now. So let's see, let's do the let's do this tangent of 60. Tangent of 60. Alright. Okay. And then I want to minus uh, 0 0.5, that's one half, times the tangent of 30. Fold that up. That's really strange. Oh wait, uh, this is L over two as well. Okay, sorry. All right, so let's get this thing right. Um, uh, the tangent thirty. Load that up. Okay, and this is divided by two. Right, and this is correct. Let me just make sure I understand this correctly. That's a little strange, actually. Wait, oh, I see. Uh, you gotta be careful about these things, right? So, uh, this is in, oh, this, oh, I see everything. Oh, okay, now that makes more sense, all right? It's like, this is just in the wrong, so now it's in degrees, that makes more sense, right? And now I need to, right, so then divide this, oops, that's the problem with this calculator, actually, okay. Um, yeah, open that up. Load that up, and then divide this by the entire thing by two. Okay, so h is going to be equal to 0 0.577 times l. All right. Okay, so that's basically the, the key thing I need here. Right. So this is just basically just a little over halfway. All right. Okay, beautiful. So I have all my h's here. Right. So let's go ahead and do this now. All right. So um, right. Okay, so let's go do this. All right, so this can be E. It can be equal to. So let's label these things. I'll call this number one. This is number two and number three. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna basically do all this in the uh, y direction. Okay. Because in the x direction, because this thing is the same, this will cancel each other out. I'm not gonna show it to you, but I'm gonna just tell you that this is in fact the case. All right. You can prove it to yourself, but if you imagine there's a small field in the x direction and you flip it, the field will flip, but the situation is the same. So therefore, this small field in the x direction has to be equal to zero. So I'm just going to compute just the y component of this thing, all right? So in that case, I just need to sum over the y component. So this is going to be basically be k, okay, q1 over r um, uh, 
well, let's just, let's just be very pedantic about it, okay? So EY is going to be E times Y hat. So it's going to be basically be the sum over K QI over RIP squared RIP hat dot with Y, okay? All right, now let's do the rest of it, okay? So this is going from the the ith particle to the uh, point we care about. So it's going to be basically for this one k q1 divided by r1 p squared. Now r i p is basically hat is pointing this way, right? So that's minus y hat dotted with y hat, okay? This will end up basically being minus one, okay? Plus now, k q2 over r2p squared, okay? Now the rest is just geometry. This component is going to be um, my dot with this one. This is going to be basically in uh, uh, this direction. So it's going to be basically be the sine of 30 degrees, okay? Plus now, this one as well, k Q3 over R 3P squared, okay? This will give me another sign of 30 degrees, all right? Okay, so let's just put everything together now and all this stuff. So this is gonna be basically be K, all right, Q1 over R. Okay, so what's nice about this, these things are all H's, right? So all equal this, so H squared, times minus one plus k q2 over h squared sine of 30 plus k q3 over h squared sine of 30 again. All right. Okay. So let's get all the signs right. So this is going to be, uh, this was uh, minus q plus q plus q. Right, so let's put everything in there now. All right, so it's gonna be we'll leave that as symbolic k um, times minus q minus one divided by a squared plus k q over h squared sine of 30 is 0 0.5 plus k q over h squared sine of 30 is 0 0.5 again. So this add together would just be one. This one is also going to be one again. So the answer at the end of the day turns out to be two kq over h squared. Okay. And you want to write this down in terms of the axis. This is all in the y hat direction. Okay. So it's just pointing straight up that way. All right. Sorry. Pointing straight up this way at the center. Okay. So that's very very nice. Okay. So that's the first thing, all right? Okay, so now, this is a uh, problem three, say. All right, so now let's go work on the next one. So problem four, okay? What's the force on minus charge, minus Q charge in the diagram above? So let's just draw this one out again. Okay, this is minus Q. This one's actually a little simpler than the last one, okay? These are all length L plus Q plus Q. All right. So we'll call this number one again. This is number two, number three. The F of basically the force on one is the, equal to the sum of the forces I on one. Okay. I pardon me if I did this, if I reversed it earlier, but like this should be the right way of doing it now. This is the force of basically two on one plus the force of three on one. Okay? So let's add them up together. So it's gonna be equal to, all right? Now, the other thing to notice is that basically, um, if I add the forces here, I'm gonna get care about the force in the y direction because it will turn out that there's no force in the x direction. If, imagine, let's say there was a force x direction, right? what you could do is you flip this thing, all right? And then this force would flip over in, so in direction. But then you notice that these, the situation, then we flip over the same as we did before. 
So that means it has to point the same direction, which means it's only true if there's no force in the x direction. So we'll only care about the force in the y direction, right? So the force in the y direction is just going to be equal to F1 dotted with y, right? So it could be F of 2 on 1 dotted y plus F of um, uh, 3 on 1 dotted with y hat, okay? All right, so let's pick the y direction this way and let's go ahead and do this problem. Okay, so now what's important to notice, this is 60 degrees. This is 60 degrees, all right? Okay, this is L, right? So this is going to be equal to, this is going to be K, Q1 on Q1. So it's basically Q2 on Q1 divided by R21 squared and then r21 hat dotted with y hat, okay? Plus now, k, q3, q1 over r on 3, 1 squared, r3, 1 hat dotted with y hat, all right? Okay, so this thing is just this component of that. That is literally the sine, the, the sine of 60 degrees. And similar case here, here, this is sine of 60, okay? This one's easy, because this is the distance between these two charts. They're both L, okay? So it's gonna be equal to K. Now Q2 was plus Q. Q1 was minus Q, divided by L squared, sine of 60, plus K. Q3 was Q. Q1 was minus Q, divided by R31, that's again, L squared, again, times sine of 60, okay? So at the end of the day, you get something that's very simple here. This is minus KQ squared over L squared, um, what, two sine of 60, okay? In the Y hat direction, so the force in the Y hat direction, all right? And there's no force in the X hat, so this is actually entire force. Now, what does this mean? This minus sign means that this charge here feels an attractive force toward these two other charges, right? I mean, what you expect, basically, this is a minus charge and two plus charges, opposites attract after all, okay? All right, so that is number four, okay? Now let's consider one last one, okay? All right? Consider two charges plus Q attached by a spring of spring constant K. What's the equilibrium distance between these two? So this is one thing that I don't like, but that's just like, we usually use K, we also use K for Coulomb's constant. So I'm gonna change this thing, call this KS, right? Make it simpler, right? Okay, so uh, let's draw a diagram here. This thing is KS again. So I have two charges, plus Q, this is number five here. And then I'm gonna attach by a spring, all right? And this is another charge, plus Q, all right? Okay? And this is gonna be some distance uh, between each other, all right? Let's say some distance all right, okay. So what I know about this uh, thing, all right. So what happens is that I want the sum of the forces, so for equilibrium, sum of the forces have equal to zero, right? So that means the net force is equal to zero. That's, that's the definition of equilibrium, right? Okay, so let's find out for what position this is true. So there are two forces. First is the force spring, all right? Let's basically just look at number one. Uh, plus basically the force due to the electric field, right? Okay, so let's call this one and two, all right? So this is, uh, we're gonna calculate the force on one, all right? So the force on one is gonna be equal to, well, see, this force on the spring is minus K times X, all right? So let's basically understand which direction it's gonna be. This spring is gonna be pulling it in this way, so it'd be times the minus X half direction, all right? It's going to be trying pulling this together, all right? And then basically I'm going to add the second thing, which is plus K, uh, Q1, Q2 over X squared, right? This distance between them. And then the distance, basically this one is going from basically two to one, sorry, to be two to one, okay? And so this is going to be pointing in this direction. That's also going to be minus X hat again, all right? Okay, so it's going to be basically be kx plus k, this q1 is q, q2 is q, so it's q squared divided by x times 
pi is basically um, uh, uh, minus x hat, okay? And this is going to be x hat, all right? So let's write this thing out. This is, oh, sorry, this should be k spring, k spring, otherwise, no, sorry, this one's k spring, that one's k spring, okay? So it's going to be k spring x minus k q squared over x squared, okay? And I want this entire thing to equal to zero because I care about equilibrium. All right, well then the rest of it is pretty simple. So if this equals zero, that implies that kx spring is equal to kq squared over x squared, just basically put this on the other side, right? And solving for x, so let's get to x cubed is equal to k q squared over ks. So it's equal to, implies that x equilibrium is equal to um, k q squared over ks to the one third power. Okay? And that's it basically for uh, the worksheet.